So can you see the presentation slide? Yes, sir. You can see, sir. Okay. So hopefully today uh, we'll uh, finish the subsurface exploration topic. You already have seen this uh, subsurface soil explorations uh, techniques like boring methods. Okay. And we also have seen some of the techniques of the sampling. And particularly, we discuss about the uh, SPT test. Uh, still, we are discussing SPT test. And now uh, we are discussing the soil properties that how can you get the soil properties from the SPT test field, right? So, in last class, uh, last class we have started from here, right? So, in last class, we have seen how can we calculate the uh, hammer uh, efficiency or, or how you adjust the hammer efficiency and how can we get the value of n60 okay yes sir then uh, we try to calculate the some properties of soil like uh, consistency index uh, then share share strength also the compression strength and after that we try to calculate the OCR that is the over consolidation ratio of soil and I already mentioned that all the values uh, we are calculating from the N60 or from the field data of N these are all approximate okay yes sir okay then we also discuss uh, we started we've started the discussion for granular soil particularly so we'll continue for the granular soil so n160 we need to adjust n60 to n160 for the granular soil why do you need to adjust this so our work and pressure sir this is very easy that for the over water pressure so we already have uh, seen uh, i told you to look into the book to uh, find these for uh, formulas uh, these two are the very popular formulas that we are using to calculate the CN. So I'm not sure either you have checked in the book or not. If you check, if you gone through the book, you could have find like all the CN formulas are uh, based on the sigma prime and <coughs> PA. Okay, so ratio between these two, all the CN formulas can be find by using the sigma prime naught and uh, PA2, uh, sorry, uh, PA, that is the atmospheric pressure and that is the stress due to the overburden soil. So if you do not look into this formula, so you'll be in trouble. Okay, so if you can find out this one, so these are the formulas gradually based on the equations, uh, you just look into the book. So these are individual <coughs> formulas equation. So from individual uh, formulas, you can find out the CN, right? If you know the this value, sigma prime not by PA. So if you just simply insert the value of CN here, you can get, get the value of uh, N160. Is that clear? So yes, sir. Sometimes, yes, sir. sometimes if you have like the value of these two and you can directly get it from here you may not have to do the whole calculation here sometimes you can skip the calculation of this formula but very often you will find or maybe in the exam i may give you to calculate by using these formulas okay yes sir okay okay so then we can do the correlation between relative density and n60 so one of the approximate table you can see here n160 if you know the value of n160 you can find out the relative density by using this table so suppose if i say uh, n value or oh, okay directly if i say n1 uh, suppose n160 if you consider n160 is oh nice n160 n160 is suppose 8 okay so if I say N on 60 is 8, what would be the value of relative density? Can you say? So 20, 20. 20. So 
sir 5 to 30 or 20 5 to 30 or 20 what does it mean two value of relative density for the one value no if you say no no no, no. if you say 5 to 30 the answer is absolutely wrong okay the answer is wrong so you need to yes exactly you need to make the interpolation so i'm telling you again how you can do the interpolations so this eight uh placed between the five to eight suppose here so you can uh, find the difference five to ten what is the difference five right yes five. and five. five to thirty difference is 25 25 okay yes sir. so here you can see for yes, uh for changing of n160 of 5 it is changing 25 in the relative density so you can do the comparison with the 8 so 8 and the 5 difference is 3 so for 1 how much and for 3 how much then you add the value for 3 with the 5 so you find the value maybe 5 plus the calculated value you understand no sir yes sir okay no sir no sir yes what so for five it is changing 25 times right right and for this is uh, five uh, equals to uh, 25 for five number of uh, n right variation of n and you are having the variation of relative density 25 for one it would be five uh, uh, sorry sorry it would be 25 by 5 right sorry 25 by 5 and then multiplied by 3 so how much that would be 15 right 15, so 15 plus 15. 5 so one of your friend already told it 20 so you see how fast he is very good who told in the beginning 20 okay this is the way you can do the interpolations so now if i give any particular value of n6 n160 you can find it even if i say 25 you can also find out the uh, relative density for 25 number of n160 is that clear now yes sir so now uh, there are several ways also to find out the relative density so this is one another one is this person uh, they develop another formula <clears throat> so by using this formula we can find this uh, relative density too so where you need to just put the n60 and ocr values that is our consolidation ratio you already know and the known value of sigma prime naught that is the effective uh, sorry our burden pressure for the granular soil and this is the atm uh, atmospheric pressure and this is the uniform coefficient of sand right so this chart also will get it from the uh, table so if you put all the informations here you can find out the relative density so in exams maybe i will specify which one you will, will follow okay yes sir okay yes sir okay so now have a look uh, you can see uh, we already calculated the dr in last uh, last slide so once we get the value of dr that is the relative density uh, we can go for next uh, param uh, next parameters but there are many other way also to calculate the uh, relationship between the relative density and the n60 so this is one of these is developed by Meyerhoff, and here it is uh, you should look into the book that which formula is for which uh, which type of soil keep in mind this is provided the estimation only for clean medium fine sand so when the sand type is written fine sand that time you can use this formula you understand so for every formula they specify they de uh, develop this formula for which type of soil so please look into the book if you feel that or if you find only the lectures okay or if you study only the lectures it will not be enough to answer all the questions from the lectures because in lectures it is not possible to cover all the information yes sir. Okay. yes sir yes sir okay. so similarly other two formulas are also here so you just can look into this book so here every cases you find these are based on some parameters 
and they also explain how can you get the other parameters to find, find out this uh, relative density so these are simple as simple as it they explain everything you just need to understand this and just uh, get the value and you just put it and you get it okay so this is for the frictional angle we call the frictional angle phi right can you see can you see this slide yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. so this is interesting that they uh, there are only three formulas they have developed so you can find this one so what happened peak hanson and thornborn uh, they develop in 1974 and they develop actually a graph they actually develop a graph from this graph mr of the he developed the equation empirical equation and that is the empirical equations and where you can see only the use of n60 so he developed the empirical formula from the graph okay and uh, scatman uh, provided correlation between these three uh, between uh, n60 and overburden pressure and also relation with the friction so then it is mathematically developed by this uh, researchers you already seen in last slide also they are developed for the relative density too they also provide the uh, equation for the what friction right angle uh, soil friction so you, you, again it is depend on the n60 and sigma prime naught divided by pa that is this ratio and this ratio only these two values are unknown so if you want to find out the frictional angle so this will be given in the test and you can find out this one and this is known constant okay so next one is hatanaka and uh, uchida they develop this is the uh, actually the recent one so they use this granular one particularly and 160 the number of blue okay and they make it more easier than previous years so these are the three for the angle uh, angle of friction okay. only three formulas are here okay so any confusion on this finding the frictional angle no sir so till now you can uh, see so many parameters can be developed from the spd test right so this is really an advantage for us that we can develop many of the uh, soil parameters from the SPD test value or the N value, which is really, really important for us. And this will save us a lot of money. If it is like not that much big project, you can just move on with this. Okay. So finally, we can also calculate the uh, elastic uh, elasticity modulus of elasticity so does anybody have any idea what is elasticity modulus of elasticity what is modulus so ratio of between, ratio between strain and stress uh -huh. so ratio between sir, strain and stress sir ratio between stress and strain sir stress and strain strain okay so have a look so this is for the materials but what about the soil what would be this for soil this is the stress okay no problem but what would be the strain for soil what would be the strain try to use your common sense what is this what is this don't you see my drawing sir, settlement sir settlement exactly because while it settles if if you have the soil suppose like this right so if it settles down here so the this is coming here right so this portion yes, sir. is reducing right so indirectly what yes, sir. you have some changes so strain value is the changes over total length right yes sir so similar way so that's why if you can find out the uh, elastic sorry modulus of elasticity of soil so that would be another important parameter for you to estimate the elastic settlement of foundation right 
Is that concept is clear to you now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So at first order estimation of uh, modulus of elasticity was given by Kulo and Mayan. So they actually contribute a lot to the SPT test. So they develop one formula which is related to the N60. This is constant, we know, right? And they provide one factor, that is the alpha. So it depends uh, or it varies based on the different types of sand. So I will look. This is the constant value, we know, right? And alpha, how does it uh, vary? For 5, sorry, alpha, it would be 5 for the sand with fine. That means the fine sand is 5, right? And 10, it would be for clean, normally consolidated sand. So, in the quotients or in the type of soil, you will find what is the type of soil, what is the type of or kind of sand, something like this. It would be 15, it is if it is clean over consolidated sand. So, usually during the test, you try to find out the what is the type of sand first. Then you can use these formulas very uh, easily. Okay. So, if I mention that, okay, uh, calculate the modulus of elasticity for the consolidated sand. So, what would be the alpha value? 10. Exactly. So, alpha value would be 10. If I say for the over consolidated sand, you will use the 15. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. these were. Yes, sir. Okay. So, since we finished all the parameters, we have seen all the parameters, I just want to brief that what are the informations we can extract from the N value. Have a look. Uh, from, the, from the cohesive soil, we ex extract the N value. First, CI, that is the consistency index. Then, unconfined compression strength. Okay. Then, later, we also can develop shear strength of clay. That means the same soil, cohesive soil. So, Two proper three properties till now, right? And also we can calculate the OCR for this cohesive type soil. Is it clear? Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Okay. So now if you move to the granular type soil, we need to convert this N60 into N160. Then we can uh, find out so many uh, values. Like we can find out the relative density of of the granular sand okay then we can find out the frictional angle right we can find out the modulus of elasticity is that okay so you need to practice by considering some n values and try to calculate the parameters maybe today i'll uh, show one example to you how will practice or I will just explain. I will give you the questions pattern that okay you can practice for your class test. Okay. So now we can see uh, in the sampling method we have discussed two or three more samplers, right? So one of them is scapper bucket. What is the name of this? Scaper bucket. Scap scaper bucket sampler. Scaper okay. Buckets. So it looks like this. You already uh, have seen the pictures in the real field. It looks like a bucket system, right? So when uh, some features for the scaper buckets, when soil deposit is mixed with the sand and pebbles, that time we use this scaper bucket. So sand and pebbles. What is pebbles? Sir, yeah. Do you know this? Okay, very yes, good. So, these pebbles prevent spring core catcher from closing. If you try to use what? If you try to use last sampler, what is what it was? What was it? Last sampler? What was the name of the sampler that we used in the SPT? Split spoon sampler. Please study, I am telling you again, please do study. Split spoon sampler, right? So, in the split spoon sampler, we use spring core cut, uh, uh, catcher while we use this uh, 
sampler in the sandy soil okay the soil is sandy and soil is having pebbles that's why we cannot use the split spoon sampler is that clear to you yes sir okay so scapper bucket uh, driven yes, down in the soil and rotated so first they insert into the ground and they rotate and cut the uh, soil and just take it off scrapping from side fall into bucket okay and highly disturbed sample so this is another uh, sampling technique where we will get the disturbed sample highly disturbed sample okay so uh, these are the just a brief idea from scapper bucketing so for more details you can look into the chapters okay okay sir okay so now uh, sampling within a, a thin wall tube uh, sorry not within with a sampling with a thin wall tube so here you can see the picture of uh, thin wall tube <coughs> and this one also known as a shelby tube sometimes you will uh, you will heard the name that is okay uh, we are going to collect the sample by using the shelby tubes so made of uh, seamless steel and used to collect what kind of sample undisturbed, undisturbed. clay soil right undisturbed yes, clay soil so in case of clay type soil if you want to collect undisturbed sample so this sample is really sorry this sampling technique is really useful so most common outside diameter is 50 mm sorry 50.8 mm to and outside is 76.2 so you can see the thickness of this <clears throat> wall is very small right very thin so that's why they call it thin wall tube okay top end attached with a drill rod and bottom end with the sharp is sharpened so you can see this one is attached this one is connected with the drill rod right so here is the attachment you can see this is the connections and this edge is very sharp so if I draw the sharp side, so it will look like this, right? Like this, this is very sharp. Okay. <clears throat> and sample used for consolidation and shear test. Definitely we know if the sample is undisturbed, we can use this consolidation and shear test, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So again, I'm telling this is just yes, a brief idea on this sampling technique with the uh, thin wall tube okay so for more details please study the book okay this chapter is very uh, lengthy so whatever the topic i'm covering and whatever the suggestion i'm giving please try to follow apart from the lecture you need to study sometimes okay so now uh, in the split spoon sampling uh, portion we have seen how to calculate the uh, disturbance or degree of disturbance so, but if you use this sampler, so you can see around 13.75 is the disturbance. So, it's very near to 10, right? Compared to the split spoon, split spoon is around 110 or 111 something. But it is only 13.75. So, you can also adjust, okay, to get it more close. You can try. <coughs> is that clear? Sir, so from where 47.63 is come, hmm? di value, yes, sir. di value, di square value, di, is, di value, sir. Th this is the internal one, internal one, okay, sir. And this is the outsider one. Is it constant? No, no, no. Is, or is it just example? Yes, example. The diameter of sorry. Okay. Okay, okay sir. Yes, sir. Okay, here is just the uh, field experimental uh, overview of with this sampling. Okay, some uh, another, another pictures like they are using this this sampling technique with the thin wall tube. Similar pictures. Okay, so another sampling is the piston sampler. So can you see the pistons here? Right, this piston. Yes, sir. Okay, so yes, sir. So here they use this piston sampler so undisturbed sample which are very soft or larger than 76.2 mm in diameter 
okay so keep in mind this also giving you undisturbed uh, sorry thin wall tube also giving you the undisturbed sample but then why do you need the uh, sampler sampler of the piston sampler while you have very soft soil right while soil is very soft yes, sir. Yes, sir. and you need uh, softer larger then you need a uh, higher diameter also so that time if you want to collect the sample in larger diameter or maybe uh, you need more diameter so that time you can use this piston one because the previous case is limited up to 76.2 right and the outer diameter yes sir but here yes, sir. when you need 70 more than 76.2 you can use it you can adjust this piston based on your uh, diameter okay so these all are about about sampling technique so if i simply brief in the beginning we discuss about the split spoon sampling technique while we discuss the aspirate test standard penetration test and then we discuss about the soil properties how can you get then we have discussed what <coughs> shelby tube right then we discuss the scapper tube uh, scapper sampler now we are discussing piston samplers okay so if you understand up to this uh, this is uh, just the uh, sampling technique so any confusion with the sampling technique so in exam i'm just giving you some clue that in exam i may ask in such a okay I write the uh, different types of sampler and why maybe I, I might give some case study case study do you understand like i may give yes, some sir. soil conditioning things based on the field condition maybe in a paragraph i will say okay this is the field you want to go for what you want to go for soil testing so now let me know what kind of sampler technique you will select and why you understand so yes, sir. Indi yes, sir. individual person answer can be individual if you, you are the engineer there so you can select based on you so that's why i said most of the cases you will find the questions are individuals though it is the same questions so if you copy each other that time i can easily understand okay mr x copy from y because he and that person followed the same technique and also write the same things same reason so this yes, is sir. another important things in the soil testing or the subsurface exploration that is water table sometimes you will find during your uh, uh, sampling or during the testing you face the water level or maybe you need to consider the water level okay so how how will you confirm the water table issue so there are a few techniques you can see the foundation load bearing capacity and settlement rate effects due to near water table okay so it is we already know that like if there is a soil and if there is a water right so how close it is right based on this we have some uh, effecting factor with the soil body right in in yes, rain, in rainy season yes, in, in winter maybe water level is here right in winter but in rainy season maybe here so increasing of this water level will affect the condition of the soil so it will help sometimes it will give you some unexpected settlement sometimes it will give some unexpected problem to the soil so that's why we need to know the water table is it clear why do you need to know the water table yeah. okay yes, sir. so need to know the highest and lowest possible water level during the project life so since you are not designing a project for one year maybe you are designing a project for how much how many years many hun maybe 100 years so first of all you need to know the water table in the rainy season or the monsoon season and in the winter okay and you can also look into the some statistical value okay that okay what is the maximum water level in some some cases so hydraulic conductive soil 
बोर होल्स नीड 24 आवर्स टू स्टेबिलाइज एंड देन वाटर टेबल कैन बी मेजर्ड सो दे आर कंसीडरिंग द मेजरमेंट टेक्निक हियर सो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ सोइल हाई हाइड्रोलिक कंडक्टिव सोइल हाई हाइड्रोलिक कंडक्टिव सोइल राइट दैट मींस थ्रू व्हिच सोइल वाटर कैन पास वेरी इजीली आर यू गेटिंग द पॉइंट हाई हाइड्रोलिक कंडक्टिव सोइल Yes. Okay. So for this kind of soil, suppose you are digging the hole and you find the water there. So that time you stop for twenty-four hours. Okay. Yes. Suppose you are digging the hole and you find there is a water level, but you don't know where is this actual water level is it? Okay. Let me have the water level here. So, but if you keep it for twenty-four hours. maybe you find water level increase right water level increase or maybe you find water level decrease after 24 hours so after 24 hours whatever the situation you will consider this situation as a stabilized condition okay maybe during your boring you use the water so that time you cannot say what would be the water level also very difficult so you can simply insert some measuring tape and you can just measure from the uh, basement right yes, okay sir. so yes, what, sir. so what happen when it is impermeable not hydrotic conductive soil impermeable this is the second case this is one and this is case number 2 when it is impermeable right so that time yes. we use what is impermeable impermeable so what what is impermeable so i should ask you what is impermeable anyway when water cannot pass through the soil okay sir so, water cannot pass through impermeable layers yes so impermeable means you are not allowing it permeable means what it can go permit impermeable means cannot it resists to go right so yes, sir impermeable layer, impermeable layer is clear for you yes sir okay so for highly impermeable layer use the piezometer consist of porous stone or uh, perforated pipe okay with a plastic sand pipe to measure the water level so i think you know how to use the piezometer in maybe in uh, geotech one you also use this piezometer right yeah. so this is one of the uh, example of uh, piezometer okay, to find out the water tables okay so this is uh, really important and now uh, i can give you some idea some of the different kind of test test by which test we can get the soil properties mainly we can get the soil properties by this test so the the name of this test is like ben shear test uh, this is uh, one of the another popular test cone penetration test pressure meter where we use the pressure meter uh, dilatometer core uh, coring of rock this is specially used for the rock 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 soil so using this uh, different test method we can also find out the soil parameters since in this course i cannot go in details of every methods like spt right so in spt i spend a lot of time why because spt test you will find in your career life very frequently okay but this might not be but maybe you can so that's why these are your reading assignment right yes sir this is your reading assignment okay so you read this from the book okay okay sir okay sir so these are some guideline like preparation of a uh, boring log so this i think you just can read it simply just you just put the company name address drilling num uh, drillers name these are some general guideline to prepare the log book okay to submit so this is one uh, uh, example of the uh, testing values suppose you you did the test the project name you put it here locations and the boring number maybe in the project you have so many boring right maybe you have a land and you have maybe 
one two three four five six several number of boring right so in the drawing what you will do you will specify the number of boring right suppose this example is for the boring tree can you see the slide yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so, yes, sir. so what type of uh, boring uh, technique they use all those team auger they use okay so this kind of general information you 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 do it there and have a look there for this boring number three they put the depth description of the soil profile so they try to give the uh, information about the soil so they go through with the meter so one meter two meter three meter up to eight meter they just check okay and they check the information and here you can see the n60 percentage of water then they put the comments also so this is one template and another way you can see uh, you can consider the date and you can you can put the legend here what are this legend while you go for loose light brown sand you use this kind of drawing while you go for medium dense brown uh, gravelly sand you use this kind of legend okay that means the symbol so is that clear yes sir okay yes sir okay yes, sir. so now i give you more more uh, relevant example based on our country so in our country you'll find while they finish the uh, boring uh, sorry not boring sampling they develop this kind of graph suppose this is a particular number of boring suppose you have a land and on this land you did one borehole here so maybe this is the boring number three okay so for borehole number three you did the and value testing so what you found you you consider the uh, uh, what is called a sampling so at two meter they first take the sample you understand so what is the value of n here yes, sir. what is the value of n here can you see four, three, three. eight eight and eight, what are three. these four three and five what are these four three and five so uh, deep sir no Mm. This is the number of blow. First blow, uh, first, uh, first insert. There. Uh huh. Very nice drawing, right? So to insert this first 150, they needed four blow. Okay. Then second insert, they needed what? And three blows. Three blow. And the last insert, they needed five, five blows. Blow. We usually do not consider this. So that's why the n is how much here? Eight. For this n would be eight. Eight, sir. So now is it okay? So if I and if I give you are not considered. Hmm? Yes, sir. Which one you are not considered? Four, four. Four. Last one. This is. Not last one. This is the first one. It will go first. First one. Okay, sir. Right. I have shown you yes. the video tutorial also to make yourself clear anyway so have a look gradually you can see maybe from head to head this is 1.5 meter distance right so maybe this is 3.5 right another is 5 so this way they did the in, uh, interval like 1.5 interval 1.5 meter interval 1.5 meter interval they did the testing have a look how you can read that soil profile this is very interesting after here you find that oh sorry up to this you find that n value is gradually increasing but after that you are again getting increasing and, and highly increase again another and after that okay you are getting more or less like uh, stable condition okay so there are other calculations also so based on this you can uh, find out your desire q right desire q or desire uh, bearing capacity and you you find the depth of the uh, footing that time so we'll discuss it maybe upcoming chapters okay so there are some examples i just added maybe last uh, last session uh, requested me to do some examples for this uh, chapter and lectures so i think uh, these examples you might understand easily so from the given soil profile calculate the approximate value of consistency that is ci okay and i'm confined compression strength qu okay 
have a look this is the soil profile okay so this is the base point so here to here it is 3 meter right so at 3 meter you get n value is how much 5 sorry not n this is n60 5 3 so, n60 so n60 is 5 so you, you can five find out the n65 so you can do the interpolation and you can find out the q u and ci from this by doing interpolation right is that clear to all yes sir interpolation that's no okay difficult. so if i say find the uh, q u and ci for this falling soil profile can you find it just need to do the interpolation for every case right yes sir even for yes, this sir. This this portion eight and this is also eight. So if for these two, you just need to do once because both are eight. So indirectly, it would be yes. like eighty, right? You don't have to do the interpolation here because ultimate is eight. Here is ultimate is eighty. So simply eighty, right? This is more easiest okay. way. Okay. So for nine and ten, we have to nine and ten. You have to do. You will do interpolate between the eight to fifteen. Okay, so similar way, another example also I added. If I say for granular soil, have a look, keep in mind the type of the soil always. And normally consolidated, granular soil and normally consolidated fine sand make the correlation of N60 value in the soil profile. So I give the soil profile same profile, maybe I will change or not, and it's up to me. You are suggested to use this Scampsion's formula, right? I already mentioned that what are the formula you need to use right okay and yes sir and calculate the following properties so uh, you can find the uh, formulas uh, for this one that uh, relative density by these uh, equations mayor of and average peak soil friction by these equations you already seen this is the first equation right and modulus of elasticity by cool wave mayon so by using these formulas you can find out the values is that clear? Can you do this kind of example? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. We can. Okay. Yes, sir. Keep in mind. It. Keep in mind. Just giving you another loop. That is, I am giving these are n sixty. Right. Sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, this sir. is what kind of sign? Soil. Granular soil. So for granular soil, to use this formula, what value you need? Many a time you need N160. Right? So you need, yes, N160. So that's why you need two correction factors. Sir. We need to convert yes. it. So that's why you need to calculate the correction factors, right? So. So yes, which sir. which correction factor equation you'll use? Scampton, right? Yes. You understand? So yes, from sir. from there you'll get yes, the sir. value of C N. Yes, so if you get the value of C N, you put the value of C N in the equations and you can get it easily. And then you can apply these formulas. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So thank you. So that is the end of our this chapter.